So for the main takeaways of global transplantation for AML, um, the first is we redemonstrated what has been shown in other articles that the rise of AML incidence um, from 2009 to 2016 um, is increasing. So there was about a 16.2% increase in the global incidence, but this was outpaced by the increase in the actual transplantation rate, which was right around 55%. And this represented an increase in allogeneic stem cell transplant for AML at around 65% with a reduction in autologous in all regions except for Southeast Asia and Western Pacific, and that was about a 35% decrease. Um, amongst the allogeneic stem cell transplants, um, and actually in total transplant in general, uh, the rise is, like I said, in all regions, but um, it was most pronounced in um, areas with lower resource predominant um, countries. So specifically in uh, Africa and the Eastern Mediterranean, we saw a doubling of transplantation rate over this time. And in South America, about a 75% or well, actually 74% increase. Um, so just, you know, for us to pay attention to in the field going forward, that AML transplantation is on the rise, but that we're really seeing more explosive growth in places that um, um, are least equipped sort of to deal with this um, rising uh, need in transplantation. Um, I think the most important um, in trends for transplantation were just what the utilization rate was for stem cell transplant. And we use this by indexing the transplants to um, the AML incidents in different regions of the world um, using multiple databases. Um, but overall, globally um, in patients less than 70, which we considered most likely to get a transplant for allogeneic stem cell transplant, we're really only looking at a 20% utilization globally, which is very far below what we would hope and expect in curative treatment. Um, and compare this in different ranges of the world, there were some very vast um, discrepancies. And so in high resource regions, such as North America and Europe, where you have the most abundant resources to bring to this practice, um, we're really only at about 40%, so 39% in the U.S., and then Europe was more like 35% at max, um, which really poses the question of how we are using stem cell transplant even in our most resource-abundant regions. And then comparing this to places that have um, lower resources um, to bring to bear for uh, um, health utilization um, in Africa and the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, those numbers were far, far lower um, and were 2.9% versus 5.4% in um, South America. So that gap is huge um, in utilization, uh, which I think is something that our field really needs to pay attention to. Um, and then I'd say sort of the last big thing we looked at were actual um, trends in the practice of stem cell transplant globally. So what we saw is in all regions, there is an increasing focus on stem cell transplant and CR1. Um, and so over time, uh, that has increased to be over the majority of transplants in all regions of the world. Um, for donor type, I think this was probably the other most interesting area uh, that we will talk about a little bit further. But um, in regions such as Europe and North America, the majority of stem cell transplants are still happening from unrelated donor sources. So about 56% versus 55% in North America and Europe, but compare that to what's happening in the rest of the world, um, where in Asia and Western Pacific, 62% were happening from related donors. South America, that number rose to 80%, and then Africa and the Eastern Mediterranean, that rose to 96%. Um, so there's a huge shift in, if, um, in the reliance on unrelated versus related donors based on what part of the world we're talking about. And I think, interestingly, in all regions from 2009 to 2016, um, for these related donors, there's a rise in haploidentical, or maybe I should say non-identical, non-sibling transplants. Um, so that is something that is really um, an increasing uptake and will be interesting for the field as we consider how best to do those transplants in lots of different practice settings. Um, and I guess the last thing I would say is that um, overall, everywhere, there's a shift towards peripheral blood stem cell transplant. Um, that is overall at this point up to like 78% of stem cell transplants globally. Uh, 
Um, and, I, and I think that is not surprising for the ease of collection, but I think an interesting question in the field, because there are still some benefits potentially to using a bone marrow source um, in terms of GVHD long-term uh, risks and sort of return to productivity for patients. So I'd say those are our main findings. And I'd say what I really want to highlight is that we're really not quite where we'd like to be for utilization of stem cell transplant for AML, um, given this is a curative therapy um, and that we're really not where we want, um, especially in regions of the world such as South America and America and Africa and the Eastern Mediterranean.